This is the story of Brandon Lawson. Brandon Lawson went missing on the night of August the 9th, 2013. The father of four ran out of gas while out on the road. He never made it home to his family. Brandon's loved ones as well as others in the, in the San Angelo community in Texas have been searching for him and searching for answers. No one has given up on him. After nine years into the search, they found a key piece of evidence. A small search party investigated Brandon's last known whereabouts in 2022 and came across a pile of the, father's miss the missing father's clothes. The team contacted local authorities who conducted a search. This led to them finding human remains. Authorities first became aware of Brandon's situation on the night of his disappearance. He made a 911 call. In a recording of the call, he explained that his truck ran out of gas and that there was a guy chasing him through the woods. Please hurry, he urged. There will be no talking to them, Brandon went on. I accidentally ran into them. So it sounded like what he was saying was is that he was driving and maybe he accidentally hit someone maybe they followed him maybe it was kind of a hit and run thing and he just drove away i have a copy of the 911 call that he made that night it's 911 emergency yes i'm in the middle of the field it's like we're just pushing guys over right here going towards that went on both sides my truck ran out of gas. There's one car here. I checked the, the woods. Three cars. Okay, now run that by me. Don't worry, I talked to him. Okay, I'm going to run into him. I'm going to run into him. Ah, you ran into him. Okay, well, I'm going to run 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 into him. Okay, The woman on the phone, the 911 dispatcher on the phone, asked if anyone was hurt. The phone then went silent. Now, over two years on finding human re remains near his last known location, the DNA results are still waiting to be finalized. His family has been keeping people updated via their Facebook page. In October of 2023, they issued an update. We do have a small update regarding the human remains found February of last year, they wrote. Since our last post, the laboratory has been continuing to try to pull any kind of DNA from the remains. A few weeks ago, one of the tests was able to extract some information. This test confirms that the remains are those of a male. The test also was able to extract some markers that can be compared to DNA from Brandon's father. While the Texas Ranger in charge of Brandon's case stressed not to hold out all the hope on this, he did say that they are feeling positive that this is Brandon. This happened in 2013. The remains were found in 2022. That's nine years that have passed. Um... I don't know if they were able to determine the cause of death of these remains. Who were these people that were supposedly chasing him through the woods? Did he imagine all of this? Was he under the influence of something? Brandon Mason Lawson disappeared in the early hours of August 9, 2013. He told 911 that he ran out of gas along a stretch of Highway 277 a few miles south of Bronte, Texas. On August the 8th, 2013, Brandon Lawson arrived at his home in San Angelo, Texas, where he lived with his girlfriend of 10 years. Between the, um, at around 10.45 p.m., Lawson and 
his girlfriend got into an argument. Lawson had not returned home and since the night before. She believed that Lawson was on drugs. Now, see, this is kind of leading me back to, was he imagining this? Was he believing that there were people chasing him? He says he ran out of gas, but he also says that he ran into somebody. Um, at the time, Lawson had had ongoing issues with substance abuse, but he had been clean for about six months. His brother, Kyle, later claimed that Brandon had been taking methamphetamine around the time of his disappearance. At around 11.30 p.m. that night, Brandon Lawson called his father in Crowley, Texas, about three hours away, and told him he was coming to his house. Lawson left his house at around 11.30 p.m. to go to his father's house. He was driving a silver Ford F-150. At about 12.30 that night, Lawson called his brother Kyle and told him he had run out of gas and was pulled over on U.S. Route 277. He claimed that the, the brother says that during the call, he told him that three people had been chasing him out of town and later clarified that they, these were Mexicans in the neighborhood. Kyle asked if he was hallucinating which Lawson denied. Kyle and his wife drove over to the brother's house, this is Brandon's house, and got a fuel container to get some gas. Kyle said they continued to try to call each other back and forth, but he could not hold a conversation. He usually ended up hanging up after several sentences. At around 1 a.m., Lawson called 911. He told the dispatcher that he had run out of gas and that he needed the police. During the call, Lawson made several confused and incoherent statements, saying that he was in the middle of a field and that some guys had pulled over going toward Abilene, Texas. He says that his truck ran out of gas and that there was someone there in a car. He said the guy chased him into the woods and was asking that they please hurry and send the police. Several minutes later, a truck driver called 911 to report Lawson's truck sitting parked in a hazardous manner in the middle of the road. At around 1.15 a.m., Lawson received and made several calls with his brother. He called his girlfriend, his next-door neighbor, and then he also called 911 again. Though his poor cell phone reception caused several of the calls to drop, at around 1.20 a.m., all calls to his phone went straight to voicemail. His brother called him again at around 1.20 a.m. and finally got him, and he said he sounded out of breath and claimed to be bleeding. Shortly after one, around 1.30 a.m., a sheriff's deputy arrived at Lawson's truck. No one was there. Kyle arrived at the truck around the same time, and he was on the phone with his brother. His brother told him, I can see you, I'm right here. But neither the deputy nor Kyle could see him. At the time of the disappearance, Lawson had an active arrest warrant, and Kyle thought that he may have been hiding, hoping that the deputy would leave. Well, what I say about that is, if he was worried about being arrested, he had this active arrest warrant, why did he bother to call 911 to begin with? Wouldn't he have just called his brother and said, can you come and bring me some guys? I've run out of guys. And where was he at? And he told the 911 dispatcher that he was in the middle of a field 
yet his truck was sitting crossways in the road. And when the deputy and the brother arrived, the brother was on the phone with him, and he was saying to his brother, I can see you. So why didn't he walk toward them? Kyle drove around the area, drove up the road looking for his brother, hoping that maybe if he got away from the area where the deputy was at, his brother would come out. But after about 45 minutes, he left. Kyle left the gas can in the back of his truck and later returned back to the truck at around 5 a.m. where the truck was still sitting. At around 8 a.m. that morning, the truck was towed. In the aftermath of his disappearance, a local deputy organized a search party and spent several hours investigating the area, but there was no signs of Lawson. On February the 4th, 2022, Lawson's family reported on the Facebook page that a search party had, ident had found identifying clothing near his last known location and that the Texas Rangers then went out and conducted another search. This is where they found human remains. So it's very odd what happened to him that night between the hours of 1.30 to 2 a.m. when he was on the phone with his brother, and his brother leaves him a, ga a can of gas in the bed of his truck, thinking that once everyone else left, he would come out of hiding, fill the truck up, and go on to his father's. But he never did. The truck was towed. I don't know if they searched the truck. I don't know if they found any evidence of any um, drugs in the truck. If they found any evidence on the truck that maybe it had been in some type of accident or fender bender. Brandon Lawson was 26 years old when he went missing. Not only was Brandon in contact with his brother moments before he disappeared, but they were also in the same area, very close, possibly yards away from each other. And the police officer pulled up around this time that Kyle was at his brother's truck. Brandon is on the phone with Kyle, and he tells his brother to run. He says, there's law enforcement, run. Brandon was close enough to observe what was happening, and no one at the scene ever saw him. So he was there somewhere. Kyle told him that he was not going to run from the cops, that they were there to help him, and Brandon hangs up the call. The phone call with his brother Kyle was the last time that anyone ever spoke to Brandon Lawson. His disappearance remains unsolved. His girlfriend said that they had got into an argument the night prior to all of this, that she accused him of being on drugs, and that his brother later confirmed that Brandon had been doing meth, had started back. He had been clean for six months and had gone back to using meth similar to another man, a, a younger man who went missing. He called his parents and said that he was lost. He had been at a party and he had left and he was lost. He didn't know where he was at. And it was very eerie. It was very, it was very eerie. It was, you know. In this article, it says the call sounded like something from a horror movie. The man described being chased through a deserted area by several men after an altercation. He asked, he desperately pleaded for them to send the police, but then when the police came, he wouldn't come out. He was hiding. Well, they did find human remains. They found clothing that matched the clothing that he had last been wearing. His truck was found in the area. Now, Here's my question. In the days after his disappearance, the next day and the day after that, when 
they went out and did searches in the area for him. They didn't find anything then. Could it be possible that he had been alive for a while and had stayed out there and died later from exposure or something else? Maybe a drug overdose. Maybe somebody really was after him and they really did harm him. So that's the most puzzling thing about this all to me is that they did not find him in the two to three to four days leading up to after the the disappearance. But eight, nine years later, they find his clothing and human remains not too far from the area where they where he went missing. So where had he been? And how did he end up back there where they had probably already searched? He may, he may very well have been hiding when they were searching. They could have walked right around him and he was hiding. But what did he die from? Eventually, the methamphetamines would have worn off and he would have come to his, you know, rational mind. This story reminds me of several others of just some unusual, eerie, disappearances where people just kind of seem to just vanish um, under strange circumstances. Um, here is another Brandon. Now I'm going to read this. Uh, Brandon Swanson. On May the 14th, 2008, Brandon Swanson of Minnesota. This is the story that I mentioned earlier in the, the you know previous story. Um, Brandon Swanson of Minnesota was driving home following a night out partying. He veered off the road into a ditch. The 19-year-old student phoned his parents and asked them to come pick him up. His parents remained on the phone with him for the next 47 minutes, but they could not find him at the location where he told him he, where he told them he believed he was. He he was. He was lost, apparently, or he was giving them the wrong location. Maybe he had driven in the opposite direction and didn't realize it. They were still on the phone call when Swanson asked his dad to meet him at a local bar. But then he yelled out curse words and the phone went silent. And Shortly after midnight on May the 14th, 2008, Brandon Swanson of Marshall, Minnesota, drove his car into a ditch on his way home from celebrating the end of the spring semester. He drove his car into a ditch. He was not injured. He got out and called his parents on his cell phone. He was unsure of his exact location. He told them he believed he was near Lind, and they drove out in search of him. They were unable to locate him, but he remained on the phone with them for 47 minutes until the call went silent. Um, they were supposed, he said that he was going to walk to a local bar and for them to pick him up there. The next morning, his parents reported him missing to the police. The police advised them to wait that this was not uncommon behavior for men his age. Later that day, the circumstances of his disappearance became more complicated when his cell phone records showed that he had been near Porter, which was 25 miles in the opposite direction. Um, his car was discovered. He does not know whether Swanson was aware he Okay, they're saying that he believed himself to be in this one location near Lind. So he tells his father, I'm going to walk to this bar in this town. Meet me there. At some point in the next few minutes, he, he cusses out like, you know, something had happened. He shouts out a cuss word and then the line goes dead. Um... The next morning, his car was found 25 miles away in the opposite direction. So, was it just because he was not real familiar with the area that he was confused about where he was? Was it drugs, alcohol, 
a combination of all these things. Foul play has not been ruled out, but it has been proposed that while he was walking, believe he may have accidentally fallen into the Yellow Medicine River where, near where his car was found. Although extensive searches have not found a body, land searches with dogs have continued for several years. His parents successfully lobbied the state to pass Brandon's Law, which requires the police to begin investigating missing adults promptly. Instead of them saying, well, he was just a teenage kid out partying with his buddies, probably didn't want to get in any trouble, let him sleep it off, and he'll come home in a day or two. Now, if the family goes to the police and says, you know, we were on the phone with our son, he couldn't, we couldn't find him, we don't know which area he's in, something happened and the line went dead. They would have to go out immediately and start to look for him. He was out of classes for the spring break and he chose to stay in the town where the college was and celebrate with his friends. He went to two different parties and friends said that he was seen drinking alcohol but no one said that he seemed to be overly intoxicated. No one saw anything out of the ordinary with his behavior that night. He left the party that night just before midnight, and it was 30 miles from where he was at to his home. So it would have probably have taken him 30 minutes or so to drive home. And them that he had driven his Chevy Lumina off the road into a ditch, and he could not get the car to move. He was stuck in this ditch. He said he was not hurt, and he asked them to come and pick him up. He finally gave up and told his parents that he was going to walk to a, a small town called Lind, which was seven miles away. His father, he told his father he was going to head to the parking lot of a local bar. His father began to drive there Talking to his son the whole time, they were on the phone together, shortly after 2.30 a.m., Brandon suddenly interrupted himself and shouted, oh. He was silent, and then the phone died. His parents attempted to make calls back to him, but no one answered those calls, and he has never been seen or heard from since. How far was he from this river? that they claim they think he may have fallen into. They claim they believe he fell in this river and drowned, but they never found a body. To this day, they've never found his body. At 6.30 a.m. the next morning, his parents reported him missing. They were first told that it was not unusual for young men to stay out all night. Even though his mother recalled telling the officers that he was not out, that he was attempting to come home, and that he had driven his car into this ditch, and that they had come out to search for him. Later the same day, the Lynn police did start to search for him, but they found no trace of him in or near the town. They called in the sheriff's office, the sheriff's office got his cell phone records and found that he had been making calls to his family along the area of Highway 68, which was 25 miles away from the town of Lind. They did later discover his car in a ditch off of a gravel road. So see, he wasn't out on the highway. He was on a gravel road. I don't know how familiar he was with this area. I don't know if this was a place that he grew up, if he, you know, ever traveled through there, or if, you know, the factor of alcohol might have played a role 
and him driving off the main road down a gravel road. Did he tell his father when he was on the phone with him that he was on a gravel road and not the main highway? So he was about a mile north of Highway 68. The sheriff told the media that the Lumina had gotten hung up on the top of an incline and the car was not really even damaged, but it once they got his full records and they were able to find the location, they said that it was about five miles away from the tower. So this is the area where the police began their search. During the phone call with his father, he had told his father that he could see a red light within walking distance. And he believed that this was coming from the town of Lind. However, they determined that this was a red light on top of a grain elevator. And they believed that this was the red light that he was seeing. Ground searches were conducted and they did a flyover with, and they brought in search dogs and bloodhounds. They searched a three mile radius. A team of bloodhounds were brought in and they picked up a three mile scent trail that largely followed the field roads to an abandoned farm. Now, I don't think, I'm really having trouble think, believing that this young man who's out walking, believing that he's walking towards the town and and he's really out here in these fields, walking along these dirt roads toward an abandoned farm. Brandon had mentioned passing fences and told his father that he could hear water nearby. The police came up with the theory that Brandon had fallen into the river and drowned. The water had been 10 feet deep on the morning of his disappearance, but it had gone down since then. Deputies walked along the riverbanks and they brought in horses and all-terrain vehicles to search the surrounding areas. And they found nothing. The water 10 feet deep but went down more after he disappeared and they were unable to find any signs of him in this river, around the river, along the river banks. Um, more searches turned up no signs of Swanson, and the search efforts were called off. The Yellow Medicine River was, the area was searched around the, the area for 30 days. The police ruled this an accidental drowning, although his body was never found. Despite what the police concluded that this young man went into the water and likely drowned. His mother never believed that. She um, referenced the search dogs leading back away from the water and continuing to run along uh, the area um, adjacent to the water. And she never believed that, the, that her son went into the water. He, nobody knows because he's never been found. And as far as I can find anything um, no remains or, or anything were ever found other than his car. Now, in 2009, his parents worked with uh, the John Francis Foundation and the state legislator in Minnesota to enact a new law called Brandon's Law. It was the for um, to have law enforcement to immediately begin to search for anyone over the age of 18. When they reported their son missing, they were told that he had probably just gotten drunk and at this party and went someplace to sleep it off or that he was still out having fun and would show up in a day or two. They explained to the police about their 911 or about their phone call that they had with their son and how they stayed on the phone with him for close to an hour searching for him. He was not out having fun. He had wrecked his car in a ditch and couldn't get it out. And 
he was confused about his location, but he was waiting for his parents to come. Had he stayed at the car, eventually someone would have been able to find him, locate him. But the police told them we can't search for him right away. We have to wait. And this is when his mother went to work on this new law. And the governor of Minnesota signed this. And um, now when anyone goes missing or is reported missing, they have to immediately begin to search for them and not not sweep it off as just somebody who decided to run away or decided to hide away or whatever. And like I said, as far as I know, there's been no trace of Brandon Swanson. And the DNA results for the other young man in the earlier story are still pending, but they have every reason to believe that it is him. If I come upon any more information on either of these two stories, I will do an update. I wanted to say something real quick before I end this video. I've been having some issues with YouTube showing me notifications for comments. I don't know why. Um, I get the comment as, as if I look at the video or if I look at my um, content. I will see that I have a comment that I haven't seen because I didn't get the notification for it. So I'm working on trying to fix that. But I just want people to know if you comment and I don't respond right away, it's because I didn't see it. And I will eventually. I try to answer all my comments. And I appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch. Thanks for watching. Thank you.